Welcome to the fourth episode of AI for Business. Today we're going to see how AI can help with products recommendations. So why should businesses use AI to help them recommend products? This known field is a great application for internet-based companies, especially e-commerce and streaming businesses, as I will show you in the next slide. The big benefit in, for example, e-commerce companies is that all the user data can be captured when users visit your website. This results in powerful analytics that can be captured and used to grow the business. The key benefits to using AI here is to improve customer satisfaction as the system is able to provide the user with more meaningful content, whether these are products, songs or videos. Secondly, the big benefit is that the personalization levels increase massively. This is because you build a profile of the customer and therefore you get the opportunity to learn your customers and provide them with a personalized user experience. And lastly, because of this personalization, the product discovery will improve dem dramatically as users might be finding products that they normally wouldn't search for. So let's look at the results achieved by big companies. Studies by McKinsey and Tech Emergence have found that recommendation system brought Amazon 35% of its revenue and 23.7% growth to Best Buy. Very interestingly, up to 75% of video consumption on Netflix comes from the recommendation system and 60% of views on YouTube come from their recommendation feature. These are some very serious results. So let's look at how this is achieved. The way recommendation engines work are as following. In most cases, there are three main types of engines. The first is collaborative that predicts the behavior of users based on the similarity they have with other users. In the example of Netflix, the system can recommend movies without having to understand what the movie is about, thus are less complex. The second engine is content-based filtering. This is a more complex approach, which consists of two main factors, the user profile and the item, such as a product. It basically tries to recommend products which are similar to the ones that a user has liked in the past. The way it works is that the system builds a profile of the user based on, for example, their search history, click behavior, interests, and tries to find similar features of an item such as a movie or a product. This requires the system to understand the content of the item. For example, when you watch an action movie with certain actors, ratings, and other features, the system can recommend movies that have similar content than those you have already watched. The hybrid recommendation system is a combination of the first two, where it combines the outcomes of each and put them together using certain scoring criteria. So let's dive slightly deeper in the collaborative filtering engine using this machine learning cycle. The first step is to understand the data source, and this is with all machine learning projects. In this case, the generic user behavior, so that's from all users, together with the activities and preferences that they have. Then, the next step, you have to select the data, clean it, and transform it so that it can be processed by the algorithm. There are two key algorithms for collaborative filtering, namely user-user collaborative filtering, that is searching for lookalike customers and offer products based on what the lookalike has chosen. And the second main algorithm is item-item collaborative filtering, which rather than finding a lookalike customer, it finds products that are lookalike. Once the multiple algorithms are applied, and this can be more than stated here, they are compared and their impact and results are measured. And that can be done through measuring the increased revenue or the increased watching time. This cycle is then repeated until the results are to an acceptable standard. The content-based filtering approach, as already mentioned earlier, is based on item features and user profile data. And this data can range from age, demographic, past sales history, click rates, etc. And the item features can be based on specific content or labels of the item. And for example, natural language processing can be used to understand the underlying content. And once the raw data is prepared, there are many different algorithms that can be applied to this application. One is cluster analysis that groups data objects based on information that describes the object and their relationships. Another is using neural networks that can be trained to predict ratings or interactions based on item and user attributes. You can use deep neural nets to predict next action based on historical actions and content. Finally, the algorithm is optimized to get the desired results. 
Uh, please remember this is just an example. In reality, many different algorithms can be used for product recommendation. And finally, the hybrid engine combines the input from both aforementioned systems to provide the user recommendation. These are often complex mathematical calculations that take various criteria from each engine to combine it to achieve the highest quality recommendation. So there you go. This is an, in a nutshell how product recommendations work. Thank you very much for watching. Please support us by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. The goal is to create frequent content on AI solutions for business. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you very much and have a great day.